Hello everyone, welcome back. So today we're going to be talking about phase diagrams. So this is an important aspect because phase diagrams help us understand how the properties of metals change based on how we create them, so like what alloys we use, um, and also about how they're treated, so what happens when you change the temperature of those metals, um, what happens if you cool them very, very quickly. So things we're going to learn about are like how many phases form, What's the composition of each phase and the amount of each phase in these particular metals? So let's jump right into it. So first off, the solubility limit. So a solution can be solid, liquid, or gas solution, and it's on a single phase. A mixture has more than one phase. So mixture more than one phase, a solution just a single phase, so it can be solid, liquid, or gas. Now, what is this solubility limit? Well, if you actually have like sugar and water, okay, so you take a glass of water and you start putting sugar into it. A solution is when you add the sugar at first, it's just syrup. And depending on the temperature of your house, which is probably gonna be somewhere around here, um, you can add a whole lot of sugar, like by weight and it will continue to dissolve and to dissolve and to dissolve and that water is going to get thicker and thicker and thicker turn more and more into syrup until eventually you reach a point right here that's the solubility limit that's the maximum concentration for which only a single phase solution exists because as soon as you pass that limit as soon as you pass that limit you're no longer going to have just syrup some of that sugar is going to fall out as solid sugar. So I would go home and actually try this. This is a very interesting little experiment. Take a glass of water, um, measure into it some amount of water, and just see how much sugar you can add and see how long it takes to dissolve before it finally begins falling out. So the question that asks us right here is, what is the solubility limit for sugar in water at 20 degrees Celsius? Well, if we drag that over and then drag it down, we see that it's going to be 65%. You also see that as we increase the temperature, the solubility limit also increases. More and more sugar can be dissolved. And also, if we were to go lower, eventually there'd be less and less. So, at 20 degrees Celsius, if the concentration of sugar by weight percent is less than 65%, then it's syrup. Otherwise, you're going to have some solid sugar falling out and gathering on the bottom. Now, a similar thing happens with metals. If we have it at a particular concentration, we have a, you know, so amount, some amount of aluminum and copper mixed together, there are certain places where it's going to form some nice single phase. Um, but it'll be this nice um, mixed together solution. But eventually, we're going to see different components. It's going to turn into a mixture. Now, when we're talking about metals, it's not quite as nice as you know, with syrup. It doesn't just disappear. We're always going to see some sort of microstructure. And so it's good to talk about components and phases because the way those different components, which are the different atoms in your metal, are arranged actually changes their properties. So phases are physically and chemically distinct material regions that form. Um, and these are usually marked with a Greek letter like alpha or beta. So this is an aluminum copper alloy, and the alpha, which is the darker phase in this case, is right here, and you can see the lighter phase is the beta. Those are two different compositions, two different microstructures, and two different phases. So, if we alter our temperature, what we saw last time is that that can change the number of phases. So. If I started at 20 degrees Celsius, but then I heated up my water up to 70 degrees Celsius, it will dissolve all the rest of the liquid. And the same thing can happen for metals. By either changing the amount of one type of metal we have in the solution, or changing the temperature of the solution, we can change the mixture's properties and change the number of phases. So, as you can see here, we went from 70% by sugar to 90% and we went back to having two phases. So by changing either the composition or the temperature, 
will change the number of phases or the microstructure of those phases. Um, all kinds of different things can change when we do that. So what is our criteria for solid solubility? Because we can't just mix anything together. Well, we've already done this before, and it's just the hume rothaby rules, which say it has to have the same crystal structure, a very similar electronegativity, and a similar radius, and also a similar valence. Now, nickel and copper are completely soluble in one another for all proportions. Um, there are some metals which are just a little bit off, either in electronegativity or in their radius, and they only have limited um, solid solubility. So it means at some point it's just going to break down. But copper and nickel, they love each other. They're happy to work together. And for most of these, we're going to see um, we're going to be in the limited situation because we're going to be working with iron and steel. And there's only so much carbon you can add before eventually it's no longer steel. Okay, so that's it for now. Thank you for listening. I'll see you all later. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.